Um, I'll be your MC today. Welcome to the September Austin Tug. We're very excited to have everyone here. Um, this is a live event, our second time in a row. So we are broadcasting live from downtown Austin at the Tableau Austin office. So uh, nice to see everyone that showed up and appreciate all those that uh, tuned in uh, at home. So um, you'll notice that I said the Austin Tug. Yes, we have a slight name change. If you recall, it used to be the Austin San Antonio DFW Tug, which was a little long for me to say every single time. That's not why we shortened it. But we do have a new, um, we, as we are opening up our doors and doing more in-person events, you know, we're working with Tableau to consolidate and make sure that we can do better events for you guys regionally. So our DFW folks that were on our advisory board are now uh, merging with the uh, North Texas Tug Group. So um, you will still see them, um, Kobe, Brad, Mon, those guys will make little cameos every now and then, but um, we, uh, we're going to be working closely now with our advisory board here in Austin. So um, as usual, um, these are the folks that help bring amazing events to you every single month. They do everything from coordinating the, uh, the meetings to uh, helping with the on-site uh, coordination and logistics. Um, so I'd like to especially thank uh, Amy, who lined up our presenter for today, and Homer, who helped coordinate all the logistics for our on-site here at the Tableau office. So thank you, guys. So here's our agenda for today. Um, I want to go over some general announcements just around the meeting format and what upcoming events we have. Uh, we have a great speaker for you today, Laura Peterson, who's the director of BI Enablement, EMEA, at JLL. Um, yes, another JLL uh, speaker. We have great ones all the time. Um, she's going to be doing a presentation on feedback and other underrated soft skills. So this is a cool presentation about how, how you can weave those soft skills and make you uh, uh, better uh, in your job as a data analyst. Um, so, and then afterwards, we want to have a happy hour over across the street for those that have tuned in person. In person. So, and just a reminder, our meeting format, this is a live meeting. So, um, you are live, smile, you're, you're, everybody's on camera. Um, we do encourage everyone, even at home, to turn on their cameras. We like to see everybody. Um, gallery view is best, so go ahead and turn that on in WebEx. Um, and we want you guys to all participate. So if you, um, if you can, if you have any questions or just think something's pretty cool during the presentation, please put that in the chat window and, and we'll go ahead and uh, respond to that. If you have specific questions for a speaker, we're saving those for the end after the presentation. Just send a private chat to Homer, and he'll go ahead and collect all those, and, and we'll, we'll present those at the end. Um, I will also put a survey in there. If you could just take one minute to fill that out, that helps make our events a lot better um, every single month. So please take a second just to fill that out. Love to get your feedback. Um, just a couple housekeeping and general announcements. Dreamforce is next week. If you haven't been to Dreamforce before, I don't know if you could get a hotel now. It's probably sold out, but, but you can still tune in virtually. So um, it's gonna be three days next week, uh, Tuesday through Thursday, the 20th through the 22nd. Um, again, if you happen to be in the Bay Area, you could go ahead and check it out, um, but most of us will tune in virtually. Um, if you haven't, please register today. Just go to uh, salesforce.com and you can register. Um, I do wanna also talk about some of the other uh, tug events we have coming up. We have um, our October, November, and December events to round out the year. Um, these are tentatively virtual. So uh, Tableau is opening its offices so we can do these events here. Um, there's some logistics that they're still working out with the other cities across the country. So we're gonna put a pause on our in-person events just for a month or so, and then we'll be right back. So these are working great, we're loving them, um, but we're, the next event might just be virtual. So just wanted to talk about the format change. All right. So with all that out of the way, let's, uh, let's, we have our featured speaker, Laura Peterson. As I mentioned, she's the director of BI and Enablement, EMEA, at JLL. Um, and she's very passionate about helping people understand and see their data. She's been doing analytics for a long time. She has an MBA from the London Business School. And, um, and she, you know, in a prior life, was a data analyst and, and a coach as well. One thing to note is they just announced all the new Tableau ambassadors, which are those people in the Tableau community that do the extra, go the extra mile to contribute back and give back to the community, take their personal time to do this. And I'm happy to announce for the second year in a row, Laura was uh, 
named a community forum ambassador. So let me give her a round of applause. So um, with that, uh, Laura, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Chris. And, and thank you, everybody. I'm very you know, honored and excited to be selected as a community forum ambassador again. Um, it's, it's addicting. Uh, answering people's questions and figuring out how many I can get done in a month uh, might not be everybody's cup of tea, but but I certainly do enjoy it. All right, let's see. I can share my screen here. Can everybody see? Uh, my screen. We can. Great. Thanks. All right, I'll get started. So, um, a lot, I do a lot of talks about, um, or, you know, teaching and coaching in, in Tableau and, and, you know, specific techniques around padding and, and things. But, um, when I took a step back and really looked at, at my career, I realized, um, uh, uh, through just a conversation with a coworker that it's really a lot of the soft skills and in addition to having the the technique and the the technical skills um, that have helped me advance or, or climb the the corporate ladder as rapidly as I, I have so I thought what a great way to to give back and then to sort of share the things or, or at least my uh, secrets of success um, not, not that the, they're, they're secret, but uh, just let you know um, what I've been through and some examples from my working life. So hopefully uh, that can help other people out in the future. All right. So who am I? Chris just gave me an amazing intro, so I can go over this slide really quickly. I'm the director for BI Enablement for Americas at JLL. I'm a Tableau Forums ambassador. Um, I moved to New York from London in 2019 after completing the data school program there. Uh, and I love French Bulldogs. I have my Frenchie here with me, Sadie. She uh, hopefully will not participate in the meeting today, but I apologize in advance if she does. All right, so just to, to start off, uh, what are soft skills? I think that's the term that everybody is familiar with by now, but there's a, a recent ish Forbes article that named this the top 5 soft skills that you should have. Um, communication, engagement, teamwork, leadership and problem solving. Those are great. Those all seem pretty obvious. That's not what I'm here to talk about. Um, you know, communication clearly important. I'm not saying that these aren't. But I think some of the things or the soft skills that that don't get focused on and don't often get written about uh, are are equally important and equally helpful. Or at least they have been for me. So what are we here to talk about? The underrated soft skills. Um, and so the three that I'm gonna speak to you guys about today are sort of curiosity, proactive thinking, and feedback. So let's get started. Curiosity. Um, one of the things that has has really helped me stand out and get noticed by by leadership um, is being curious, asking questions. I used to say, always ask questions. That you know, that was me my advice. Always ask questions. But I've had to take a step back and amend that. And now I say, ask good questions, because. Asking questions that are irrelevant or misplaced or to the inappropriate audience can sometimes do more harm than good. So, <laughs> what do I mean? In what context? I, I'm just, I mean, I guess I'm just kind of a nosy person. I like to know things. Uh, if we're having a one-to-one -one meeting, I want to know everything about you. How are you? Where do you live? How long have you lived there? Do you have any pets? What, you know, I just am, am naturally inquisitive. And so I, it, you know, really helped lend it itself well to me when I started uh, 
working or consulting for a living and you'd be put on a project and you, you know you'd have to ask ask questions who is the target audience you know when you're uh starting to a project or a new viz there are questions that you you always want to ask but beyond that um instead of just the bare minimum i would want to know things like um what is the life cycle of my data who is entering this data? Where, how does this get into the system? Is this, is this a person, uh, you know, typing it into, to somewhere? Is this, uh, a, something, a recording that automatically happens? Um, just trying to get background information to see, oh, if I know, if no, now I know that someone is, is physically typing this in somewhere. So I know to be on the lookout for fat finger errors or, oh, no, this is a, this is a recording. Of a, of a temperature or, you know, something that that's automatically taken by a sensor and recorded. So I should just either, you know, trust that blindly or, or if they, those are way out of whack, don't assume that it's a fat finger mistake. Maybe we need to notify somebody that the equipment might be off. Um, things like that have, have just, uh, helps provide more context. Um, asking about the business. Um, so after I give you this dashboard, let's say you download this data, what, do you, what are you going to do with it next? Where does it go? Just collecting all of this information helped me to see the bigger picture more quickly, synthesize that information, and also make more helpful and thoughtful suggestions uh, in terms of figuring out what they really need to see in the data viz or you know, what could be a filter versus what really needed to be uh, maybe a, a parameter or we definitely need a bar chart breaking things down by by this dimension. Um, other areas besides data viz asking questions has also been helpful for me. So when it comes to things like meetings in a corporate setting. Um, I've been to a lot of good meetings. I'm sure we've all been to some bad meetings um, or had the sentiment like this could have been an email. Um, so great meetings. What those have in common is that everyone has, you know, knows the purpose. There's sort of an agreed agenda. We all know why we're coming to the meeting and everyone in general should know what their role in the meeting is. Am I being asked to make a decision? Am I being asked to advise in this meeting? Am I the person, you know, am I going to be tossed the ball to co-present? Am I just here to listen? You know, if you are unclear about why you've been invited to a meeting, just ask, what, what is my role here? What do you expect of me? You know, that's good to know if they don't expect you to say anything or they do not want you to engage with the client unless there's a question they can't answer. That's great. Uh, it prevents you from speaking up and, and accidentally stealing the, the show, <laughs> um, which has happened to me in, in <laughs> before, and that did not go down well. So that that was a, a lesson learned. Um, and that's kind of what I mean about appropriate audience as well. And we're talking about how to ask good questions. So when you know the role, uh, you know, your role in a meeting, whether you're there to, to listen, advise or learn, you can ask, you know, make sure that it's appropriate to ask your question. If you're developing a dashboard and you are stuck and there's, you know, I need to find out what this field is or why this field only has values from 2017 and you're just dying to get the answer to it, the appropriate time is not when you're having, you know, presenting your progress to the entire stakeholder team that right that's not the right time <laughs> to di to dive into the weeds um, and ask your very specific question that is a good question but only if it's handled you know to delivered to the appropriate audience which would be sort of probably offline or one on one individually to to the main stakeholder or your main partner on the business side developing these things um, that's another example of how asking a good question to the wrong person can can hurt more than help. Um, 
other thing to think about when asking questions are um what you uh, what are you are you, are you just are are you just curious does it not matter what the answer is open ended questions are great for that where does this go what you know what happens next what do you do um versus a closed question or uh could also be called a leading question whereas um this is only going to be viewed by regional managers, right? Or you're pointing them to an answer uh, that you would like, or something that that's just a, a yes, no, true, false um, statement. Sometimes, if I could ask a closed question in an open-ended way, I end up getting more valuable information because the person, un, you know unintentionally shares something else or or the next thing or what really frustrates me about this data is uh, and I gain more insights than if I had just asked it in a very specific closed way. So that I always find is helpful when asking questions. And the other thing, um, I guess the, the last example of, of what has really helped me in terms of advancing my career and um, to, to get big pictures and to, to get things done quicker to really understand context is asking questions to myself taking a step back looking at this am i doing this the right way is there a better way to do this you know could could something be different different you know be done differently um is or is this the most efficient way to do this and really trying to to think about things and and have those those answers for myself um, so that I can be more productive when I come to meetings and and ask you know better even more and better follow up questions. The other benefit of asking questions or a lot of questions, not too many and to the right audience, you know, we don't want to be annoying, but it helps build relationships and. The more you get to know uh, a person or ask, how are you? What's going on? How was your weekend? Type things in, in these meetings with your stakeholders. We'll just develop closer relationships, especially if you are working at, um, at an office where you're likely to engage with the same people over and over again. Um, kindness never hurts, even if you're maybe never going to engage with that person again, but who knows? It never hurts to be friendly. The other bit of curiosity, um, which is not so much asking questions, is to to never stop learning, to always be curious. And I think that has really helped me um, become uh, be selected for a forums ambassador again this year. I am super curious. I'm always on the forums. I love reading uh, answers to questions that I would know the answer to. I know how to do that, uh, but I want to see what you know. What did the uh, the Flurlich twins write? What you know? What did Jim Jenna, De Jim Denner have to say about this? Because maybe they're solving it a different way that I hadn't thought of yet. And just constantly trying to learn new things, uh, keeping up with all of the latest you know features releases. Um, we have there are a ton of great community people out there who will write blogs on on what's new and um, you know how to utilize map layers uh, and the different ways you you can do that when those came out. Um, I'm trying to think of of other features that came out recently. I think map layers is the most recent big deal thing uh, to come out, but that's. That's what I mean about about curiosity. Um, does anyone have any questions here, or would like me to elaborate on on a specific thing I touched on about before I move on to the next? Yeah, I think Laura, we'll we'll save those to the end. Yep. Sure. We'll okay. Circle back. Yeah. Cool. Amazing. All right. So, curiosity lends itself to the next underrated skill that's that's really helped me. Um, in my job in being a proactive thinker. So thinking proactively, what does that mean? That is the ability to recognize a long-term outcome over a short-term win. So 
not being so stuck in the weeds and always thinking of the next thing that I have to do. What's the next deliverable? What do I have to do next? But being able to, to take a beat, um, recognize a pattern and stop and think, oh, maybe if we do this a different way, it'll be more helpful in the long run. Or I'm only doing this once for B now, but would this be helpful? Would anybody else at the ever organization ever need to do something like this? If so, you know, why reinvent the wheel? If I spend a little more time now and develop something into an analytical app, instead of just writing a short bit of code that only helps me, that is only relevant to what I'm doing, um, you know, it, you could be a much bigger win and you get much more visibility and more recognized for sort of this big picture thinking. Um, big picture thinking isn't always helpful, or, or, or I shouldn't, I should say, big picture thinking I think is always helpful, but the big picture solution might not always be what's best or what's needed in that time. But what is helpful is being able to go to your manager or go to my boss and say, so this is what I've been asked to do. I was thinking with a little more work or um, wouldn't it be helpful to combine the scope of these projects in the long run, it, it could benefit X, Y, and Z. Presenting that and coming up and, and showing your manager or your manager's manager, the senior leadership that, that you're thinking of these things and you're trying, you know, you're not just concerned about yourself, but also what's more helpful to the team and what's helpful to others really clues clues them in that you are thinking, uh, you know, you've got maybe the, those, those leadership capabilities that they might be looking for when new roles come up. Um, so proactive thinking has meant for me, uh, wasn't always easy for me to do. I am a bit of an uh, execution monster. I love doing things. Um, part of that is that I, I have um, ADHD. So I like quite literally can't sit still sometimes. I'm like, oh, what do, what are we doing next? I want to do something. I'm fidgeting. I need to be on the go. So there are times when, you know, you could be like on item two or halfway through talking about item three in your requirements list. And I'm already got Tableau open and I'm playing around. I'm like, okay, let's, let's do this. Let's get this done. <laughs> um, and, and sometimes that is great when you're in a crisis and, and we need band-aids put on really quickly. The fact that I am able to, to just execute and dive right in, but sometimes, a, you know, a band-aid is not the right solution. So being able to take that step back and say, Ooh, okay, this is maybe we need to just rebuild this rather than, than throw on a band-aid, right? If the performance of this dashboard is, is, is so bad, you know, removing some of the context filters, um, versus reworking, you know, that the massive data set or, you know, minimizing things and really taking the time to do some performance tuning is probably the better option than, oh, this loads a little bit quicker. Now let's just go with that. So having that proactive thinking, thinking ahead, um, as been incredibly helpful for me, to, both in, in signaling to the management that I, I am thinking big picture, um, I'm inclusive of the team and and have a, a little bit of a mind for, for strategy and what's happening next, what's gonna be happening in the future. This is also um, helpful to me, just, just me on my own in developing dashboards uh, because Oftentimes I would find myself developing something at the beginning of the year, January, and you're like, okay, I've got my, my SQL, I've got my, you know, or however my data source written out. Um, I've got my filters on and I just, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the new year. I'm not thinking about what January 2023 is going to look like, or it, you know, making do I, you know, is, is everything going to break when the year changes or the month changes, depending on how granular your data is being able to, to look at your dashboards, um, uh, or, and data, you know, coding for your data sources in that way and trying to, to make everything repeatable, um, as automatic or automated as possible. 
um, just dynamic. So, you know, someone, does someone have to go in and change the date once a month? Like what, if you can minimize future work for yourself <laughs> um, or future work for whoever is going to maintain the dashboard, that's also a, a huge win. So being able to make something dynamic um, when you can, instead of keeping it static. This is a huge part of proactive thinking. Um, and just going through what what that's going to look like, what things are going to look like in the future. Uh, because, yeah, I think I've, I've already said this, but um, it, even if it takes you a little longer to do, it, it might be worth it, the value trade-off. So try to to not not uh you know get stuck being an execution monster or getting so snowed under uh i know it can be easy to become a sort of uh what did they call me fire captain <laughs> because anytime there was a fire drill or some sort of emergency i'd be like oh ask laurel know what to do or if you're becoming the Mr. Fix It, that's great. They they value your technological skills uh, and your ability to execute, but it can sometimes hurt you in the long run career wise because you might get stuck there. They they need you to put out those fires, so they're not thinking about elevating you to the next level. If you want to become you know a manager or a senior analyst because you're so you're too good at what you're doing, so. Taking up the the pause and try to you know think proactively about things, how things are going to um, go down or or be impacted in the future. Really, really helpful um, for me. All right, next slide. Oh, we're frozen a little bit. Hold on. There we go. Feedback. So feedback uh, is a topic that I, I talk about a lot because uh, I used to be hor like really terrified of, of asking for feedback or getting critiques on my data visits in any way, shape or form. So I, it's, I've come a, a very long way from fearing any sort of critical or negative reaction to, to my work to being in a place where I am promoting it uh, and and actively asking for it and seeking it out all the time and not just for, for data visualizations. Um, so actively asking for feedback is hugely helpful. Um, of course, in the, you know, for, for data visits, if this is not what your client expects, you know, having some of those check-ins halfway before you're you know, popping out two weeks later with something and they say, oh, this wasn't what we wanted, doesn't, <laughs> isn't helpful to anyone because you're going to have to go back and rework that. So having periodic check-ins um, with your stakeholders is is helpful to, to see, yes, this is, you know, based, this is what we talked about in wireframing. Great. Let's, let's get your buy-in and move, move them through every stage of development together. Um, helps you all be, you know, have less surprises at the end uh, when, when people are like, oh, I, you know, I don't like this or what happened to that, or I thought this was going to be different. Uh, to trying to avoid as much of that as you possibly can. And asking for feedback also was helpful for me because I am a horrible speller and spell check is not yet a feature in Tableau. Uh, Tableau, if you're listening, spell check. Let's get on it. Uh, um, so the things like spelling mistakes. I have a coworker who used to joke that uh, you know they were guaranteed to get visit the day anytime they would spell something wrong. So something like they spelled uh, it was a visit about Nicholas Cage and they spelled Nicholas Cage wrong. Visit the day went viral. Uh, <laughs> um, or uh, one time. A, they were had collaborated with someone on a I think it was a Girl Scout cookies bills. They they that finger typo misspelled the the you know the collaborator's name. That got this of the day. So is a, you know we we joke about it sometimes, but people can read into that or look into that and not see it as just 
oh, that was a silly typo, uh, but maybe, you know, a sign of value to you. I know that that's happened to me a, a lot where it says, oh, oh, Laura spelled that wrong. She must not have attention to detail or, oh, it's a shame she didn't check this. Maybe she didn't have time to prepare enough. Uh, you know, we're, people are constantly making judgments and looking and thinking without actually saying what they're thinking to you. So asking for feedback uh, beforehand and, and after. So if, if it was my, you know, is your first time running a meeting? I know that, that I've, I've had to be the project lead for the first time and I was super anxious. I had no idea if, if it was going well. Um, back when we were, you know, we weren't all remote, it was very easy to sort of look at faces of people in the room. Were they engaged? Were they on their phone? Uh, and, and you could see if you had the audience, if you were losing them really easy to gauge in this zoom world. Uh, you can't see everybody or some people have cameras off. You have no idea. Maybe they've stepped away entirely. So being able to either meet up with your manager or, or someone else and say, how do you think that went? You know, it doesn't have to be a super formal thing. Just checking in and asking for, for little feedback along the way will help you to course correct things. Because yeah, well let's let's do let's do a, a retrospective. How you know what I think you did well in the meeting, what I think you know you could have done better at. And and that just is helpful information for me. So the next time I you know, I know what to do, what to work on, what to focus on. Okay. And the flip side of of sort of asking for feedback is is that you need to take <laughs> we need to demonstrate the ability to take on feedback because asking is great and you know awareness is is wonderful but awareness without action is useless <laughs> uh, so if we've asked for feedback, or if, if you have are presenting work that's part of a formal feedback cycle, uh, and someone has given you a piece of feedback, and you haven't acted on it on it or made any changes, that demonstrates more than you know. Maybe you didn't have time to make the changes. Maybe you disagreed with the changes. The person who took the time to give you the feedback. We'll never know your train of thought or why it wasn't changed, just that nothing changed. So they'll come away from that thinking either, oh, so and so hasn't, it didn't listen to me. They weren't listening. Or maybe they don't receive feedback well. If you're receiving feedback, the next bit of advice is don't become defensive. Sometimes if I'm presenting a dashboard for feedback and I know that this is not, you know, not the best visualization possible or probably not the best chart choice um, overall but there's a good reason that it's there maybe maybe because we're trying to baby step the client into interactivity into the interactive world maybe they they've lived in powerpoint uh, and static presentations and power bi and they have they have a report that they're used to seeing every month that they already know how to read. And if we went straight to the interactive best practices version, people would be like, well, well where are those pie charts? Where are the, you know, it's, it's too much, too much change too quickly. So if there's a change management situation, um, there could be good, basically there could be good reasons uh, for you to maybe not have a fully best practice dashboard put together. But if you're in a feedback session and you haven't taken the time or presented any context at the beginning of the call to just say, oh, I just to let you know, this is what they're used to seeing. Our objective here was this. This is, you know, you either explain yourself at the beginning and ask for feedback, but if you're just receiving feedback, and, and feel that need to interrupt and clarify like, oh, I, I know that I know that three pie charts in a row is not good. Um, and you're afraid that someone thinks, you know, this is, you don't want them 
to think that you, you know, make an evaluation on your skill level or your level of understanding of biz best practices, the temptation can be really strong to jump in and correct or justify or defend um, your chart choices, or, or even just to just to explain your decision making uh, and your thought process. Don't. Uh, <laughs> um, there, there can be uh, feedback sessions that are interactive, but unless you've made it clear that, that you they they want this to be a conversation and they want to hear your thought process, unless they're asking, why did you do this? Don't jump in. Just sit there and listen and take it. And you can go away and maybe come back and talk about it later. But interrupting the feedback sends bad signals. I have learned that lesson several times the hard way. Um, and what else? So yeah, t take take action. Make some changes. Show that that you can listen. Uh, that you've taken things on board. Um, if if the change is truly going to make the product worse, then maybe don't do it. But sh don't come back to them again with nothing nothing changed. Right? If you don't ever intend in changing anything about the dashboard then maybe getting feedback isn't isn't what you want on the stage. If, if all you're looking for is a pat on the back and great job, and I would have done this absolutely the same way, um, that's those are assumptions that, that you're making uh, about what you want to receive. So if you don't want any feedback or you don't plan on making changes and you have the option, don't, don't ask, don't invite it, because once you've heard it, People will expect you to do something with it. And um, my last bit about feedback is I know it, it's crazy hard to, to either not be defensive or not take things personally sometimes. Um, as the, the person giving the feedback might not always be trained in coaching or trained to, you know, recognize. Uh, emotional IQ and and see read the room and see oh this person is is frustrated or thinking about something else that's a really great time for them to hear or learn or take on new information. People can just be pretty harsh. <laughs> um, I have been told, uh, you know, I've you, this is flat out garbage. Uh, I've been sent, you know, people said. You know, what is this SHIT that I'm looking at? Um, <laughs> I, you got a data school really, really toughened, toughened you up. Uh, <laughs> they, they prepared you for, for anything that anyone was going to throw at you. Uh, so that I could just sit there, be polite, listen, and, you know, not have my, wear my emotions on my sleeve, or if I did need to have uh, you know, a, a quiet scream or cry afterwards, I could do that in private and I could kept my professional decor, um, you know, and, and it reflected well on me because if you just sit there and you let someone berate you in front of other people, that's horrible and is abusive and you should not have to take it. But it makes the person who is delivering that feedback look awful. If you jump in or are emo overly emotional or, or react, then th that shifts the focus away from, wow, that behavior was horrible to, oh, you know, how am I receiving it? So I know it can be really hard <laughs> sometimes. Um, hopefully everyone, you know, be nice, be kind, <laughs> and, and give feedback politely. But there are times that that doesn't happen and being able to just hold my tongue and sit there and say something to think about uh, has helped. And the last part of uh, feedback that I'm going to mention is the, the 
the fear of feedback that I talked about um, in the beginning and just a few tips on how to try if, if you're someone who takes things personally or has trouble not, uh, you know, separating yourself from your work. Um, the things that have really helped me are, are it's going to sound crazy cheesy, but as meditation um, and being able to sit alone with my thoughts, sit alone with myself and just like, looking inward and exploring how am I feeling? Where is my headspace at today? Just checking in with yourself. Um, being able to say, oh, I, I'm having a great day today. This, you know, things are going well, nothing's going wrong. I don't have anything distracting me in my, in my personal life or, you know, somewhere else. My mind is here. I'm ready. Let's, you know, I'm fully present. Let's have this conversation. That's a great time to receive feedback. If I'm walking through the day and something terrible has happened, uh, you know, I just received a terrible piece of news, something, if, if you're in any way in a negative frame of mind or just down on stuff, going into a feedback session like that, can, can things can spiral much better more quickly <laughs> um, into into your defensiveness or or an emotional reaction or or something maybe less than professional so being in tune with yourself if i'm having a bad day and, and i don't think oh maybe this feedback session might not go so well i'll ask to shift it just say hey something's come up like i need to i need to reschedule this let's do this at a different time um but also the meditation, which just sounds cheesy, but just knowing yourself, being able to quiet your mind and focus yourself. So if you do check in and you say, I'm, I'm frazzled, I'm, I'm not open to, you know, receiving feedback right now, I, or I don't think I'll receive any feedback well at the moment, being able to take yourself out of the equation, maybe go for a walk, calm your mind and reset yourself, put yourself, you know, you're thinking in a, in a towards state try to think about other things, engage that part of your brain that's either planning or something else um, to get yourself ready or to get yourself in a, in a better state of mind. Because uh, if you're prepared mentally to, to, hear, to hear the worst or, or um, to hear something awful when things go well, which, you know, if you've asked for feedback and you've been asking a lot of questions throughout the way and you're thinking ahead, Things should go well. There's no reason why they won't. So all of that has helped me. Um, whoop, oh, boy. Oh, wow. That does. Whoa. Talk about not making mistakes. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, but, well, that's the last thing uh, I'll say about feedback. Asking for it a lot. Um, in, in minor situations will help you in, in a big situation. Um, and sneak preview, surprise, surprise, what we've just seen is to, to wrap up on soft skills is this quote from um, Peggy Klaus. She is a Fortune 500 coach and author of the book, uh, The Hard Facts About Soft Skills, is uh, that soft skills get little respect but will make or break your career. And, and that um, is definitely true in my experience. So thank you guys all so much for your attention and I'll open it up for questions. All right, well, thank you, Laura. That, um, I'll give you some feedback. That was an awesome presentation. Thank you very much for doing that. I really enjoyed that. I think all the points you brought up about self, soft skills are true. Um, especially whether you're a consultant or, you know, an analyst or a developer, I think, you know, all those come to, you know, we can all relate to that in our daily jobs. So um, I, I really, really enjoyed that presentation. Um, before we open it up to the floor, I had one question. You mentioned something about uh, curiosity, right? And, and asking yeah. those questions, the why, the how, uh, what do you do? What are some techniques you've used when you have someone that's maybe quiet or shy? You ever, we've all been in a room where you, it's, you know, you're trying to pry this information out of someone. Like, 
what techniques have you used? So, so some of this is, is a, a little bit emotional IQ, whatever you want to call it, reading the room or just the person. If they're just not going to share, if they are giving one word answers and shutting you down all the time, you say, I will ask often, oh, do you have an example of this online? Or is there something, is there, is there a document you can send me? Or is there someone else who knows this better who could walk me through this in more detail, right? Because maybe maybe the reason they're not giving you more answers is because they're, they're not the subject matter expert on what you're asking. Um, but but they don't want to know enough to say that That's out true. loud. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, so sometimes I'll say, you know, and I'll, I'll apologize, you know, and I'm sorry if you're not the right person for me to be asking this to, but it would be really helpful for me if you could just direct me to maybe a member of your team who could elaborate more or, or walk me through accounts payable or what this, this code means. Um, I can set up separate time you know, to, me to do that on another occasion, or if I think that's going to get us off topic or two in the weeds, but to try to, if I'm not getting what I need to try to come at it or ask it a different way, um, see if there's something that they, they could send to me. Um, Cause sometimes I, I know a lot of things, but I don't remember them all. I'm like, Oh, Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I get back to my desk. I'm like, I have that Excel file. I know, I know there is a SharePoint out there that I saw last week about how to set up purchasing, you know. Um, so sometimes things will come back to them later, but give them the opportunity to, to follow up. And if you don't get your question answered in a meeting, that's when, and great communication skills and meeting notes are really helpful. So I always send follow-up notes for meetings uh, that are about my project or my feedback say, Okay, so these these this is what we discussed. The feedback I heard from so and so and so and so was this this and this, and we agreed that such and such and such and such changes were going to be made. So, you know, that also helps prevent scope creep and other things. And line, we're like, why 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 did you make this yellow? Well, if you remember or you look at my email here, meeting two weeks ago. You know, you, you have it there and it's been sent to everybody. So it's not just you saying you remember it, but it's everybody being like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that was in the notes. Um, does that uh, yeah, answer that answers it. Great. A couple different yeah, great tips. To try. Yes, I will uh, use some of those. Yes, I will try them out. So, um, all right, well, let's open it up to the floor. We've got some folks here in Austin, too, that want to ask. Yeah, in the back. I always have my hand up first. <laughs> um, so uh, first I wanted to uh, make a comment. You were talking about the, the this is the day. And you know, like, good because <laughs> of a mistake. Well, so there's a, a internet, you know, fact is if you don't know the answer to something, uh, if you ask, crickets. If you confidently state an incorrect assertion in the area, oh, well, you know, the sky is pink. Or whatever, <laughs> then people will die to, to correct you. And so if you're not getting answers, sometimes doing the, the you know, the reverse psychology. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. interesting. Anyway, all right. Um, so, uh, uh, I, let's see. So I'm working on a, I'm not a subject matter expert. I'm, I'm new to the domain and like even the, meta domain like i've just got a job with the state and it's an insurance i don't know anything about any of that stuff uh but i can do tableau and whatnot um so in my in my experience it's a lot easier to make incremental changes instead of like okay here's the visualization what do you think this doesn't do anything that i want it to do right is asking like so i've asked every meeting we've had like for the last three or four weeks please take a look at what I have developed so far, which is just a rough graph, and give me some feedback. One person has responded, mm. you know, but I know that if I finish it all, I'm going to get all that, you know, WYSIWYG, the op, there's an icky WYSI, which is I'll know it when I see it, kind of, you know, right. and, uh, yeah. it's like, do you have suggestions for, uh, you know, for how to handle that 
Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's let's take that one off first. Yeah, that's a that's a great. I think we've all been there. We ask for feedback and you get crickets. So I don't know, Laura. How do you how do you get that conversation going? So there. Sometimes I'll try to start the conversation by um, asking feedback on a specific item in the viz or calling at you know if you're. I am assuming this is going to a, a group of people. If you can, can at someone at the beginning, like, you know, Greg, I really need you to take a look at, at, at this, you know, from a data validation standpoint, um, that at least gets someone's eyes on it. You're right. <laughs> uh, uh, calling them out to, to look at a specific thing will help start the conversation or start the feedback. Um, other time techniques I've used are kind of creating fake deadlines. Um, is it like, <laughs> I need feedback on this by end of day or, you know, close of business on whatever, because this is, this is going to be, this is go live or this is going to the next stage or <laughs> being seen by someone else. Like it might be too late. Uh, just trying to, to uh, create that urgency. And if you're, if it's really like a roadblock, then I, I need to, to go above their heads. I need to get buy-in from a key stakeholder or take it offline and be like, what do I need to do? Or I've asked nicely several times, I need you to tell your team that they need to get this feedback in or else I cannot move forward with this project and we might not meet our deadlines. So that's... Those are, those are great. Yeah, those are really good. And I have the flip side of that question, which is, yeah. you're, you were talking about... Um, you're getting feedback and, you know, holding your water. Uh, <laughs> but what, like, what if you need more detail? Like when should you sort of, you know, cause if you, if you sidetrack the person there, you're not going to feel like they didn't get their thoughts out, but then you might lose that thread. Cause I also suffer. Well, I also have ADD and uh, you know, yeah. so it's very easy for me to rat hole. Like I want to drill down and all the way down to the yeah. bottom of everything, you know. I'm gonna uh, derail this meeting every meeting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, I get that. Uh, yeah, that's definitely an urge I have to fight. So I, I will often sit there until I think they're done speaking and I'll, I'll offer, or I'll say, and, and I, but I am always copiously taking notes. And if I have a thought that pops into my head, I write it down. Um, and and I, I tell people at the start of the meeting, like, you know, I just want to let you know that, that I'll be taking notes throughout. So, you know, um, please don't like if, if there's a moment of lack of eye contact or, or connection, I just, I just want you to know that that, that will be why, right? Cause, cause I, I will be taking notes. And then most people, once they hear that, they, they usually don't think anything of it. There's never an assumption of they're, they're not engaged or they're writing about something else. They know that this is what I'm doing and this is why I'm taking notes. Um, and so once they're done speaking, I'll say, oh, okay, was, th was there anything else? If, you know, if, if not, I'll say, all right, well, I would love to pick up on that thing you said at the beginning. Right. And then I can, I can go back to my thought <laughs> that I, I've written down and then maybe, uh, start or, or, or sit next to, um, and, and follow up with them in, in the meeting right then and there in, in real time. If there isn't enough time in the meeting, um, or you, you really, it's important to hear from everybody, um, because if, uh, I've had, you know, nightmare, uh, <laughs> projects that are, are deciding by committee. So it's, I need approval from not just one person, but three different parties, all with different agendas. So I need to hear all three of their uh inputs before i can i can make any decisions or start saying oh i love i love what you said how about we try this um and jumping right in so if in that situation i i would take it uh it offline that's where the the notes and the follow-up notes come in handy like i i've made um uh, I, you know or you could have mini check-ins uh where i i've i've made this this Quick change based on what we discussed in the meeting. I I changed this. Is this what you were expecting, or is this? Um, I changed this, and I I thought this was going to be an easy change to make, but I actually need more detail. This has led me to something I I, I didn't anticipate. But, yeah, follow follow up emails 
<laughs> end notes are, are always your friends in those situations. Yeah, those are good tips for sure. Yeah, well, great. Well, I think good question. Yeah. Do we wrap up? We have time for more. No, we got more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I love your points about the curiosity and learning about everything. I'm also very inquisitive. I love learning about everything, and I think it feeds kind of seamlessly into the kind of proactive thinking where you can't be proactive if you don't know what to be proactive about. Um, and I guess my question, well, my question for you is how have you kind of adapted or um, found that curiosity working out in the um, remote era? Because it's much harder to initiate conversations with subject matter experts that you're not interacting with on current projects or, you know, and I've always, I found myself that some, suddenly I'm in a meeting with someone that I hadn't been in and I learned something that I didn't knew, know about that was happening for the last year and I'm like, oh, that's actually really helpful to know because it doesn't <laughs> affect me, but I just wasn't in the right conversation. So how have you kind of addressed that issue in the remote uh, um, work? Kind of A good question. Time? So I, uh, I don't know if this will work for everybody, but I um, am a bit just uh, shameless when it comes to blindly introducing myself to people. Uh, <laughs> I, but I, my tip for that is to, if, if someone has said something that has piqued your interest or you've, you've noticed something somewhere that you thought was interesting or helpful, always, always lead with a quick compliment. Um, because who doesn't love hearing nice things, right? That, you know, I loved when you said that, that was so helpful. Thanks for that. I, you know, I'd love to catch up. I'd love to pick your brain sometime for a coffee. Let, you know, when, when would that, you know, would you, would you like to, to connect or do that? Um, or I, I'll reference, if I find some material on a company SharePoint and be like, oh, wow, I saw that presentation that you posted six months ago <laughs> on the, uh, you know, on the, on the SharePoint site. That was such a great tip that you did. Uh, have, have you, you know, have you used it any else? Where could we set up a meeting to, to discuss that more? Um, I also, you know, introduce myself a little bit at the bottom. So it's not just like, who, who is this person? Because um, yeah. that's my other pet peeve about working in, in a large organization is that your, uh, your role or title in the active directory is, is pretty much meaningless like you're gonna have to get out a real work chart scenario to see who, who is this person in relation to me am i asking you know i don't want to be sending you know the ceo of jll uh <laughs> few questions are expecting too much of their time so as long as it's it's you know you're not asking you know, something un unreasonable or or something that might make your manager or your team look bad like you have no idea who they are but you just, uh just if you've done your research people people just love compliments and if they're open to it or and will generally start engaging with you yeah good question yeah i know and especially nowadays we're all remote we've all been there so yeah great question um homer do we have any other questions i don't see any from our online audience but i did have one myself okay laura have you had a a situation in your experience where you're been given an assignment and the key stakeholder uh, is maybe representing a team, but they're really representing themselves when they talk. And oh, yeah. every time you meet with them, it's like different. And you know what you agreed to the last meeting, all of a sudden, isn't going to work so they want to go in this other direction but there was no communication in between uh to tell you what this is why this change is happening and it just seems to be like zigzagging all over the map but not with a clear convergence have you dealt with that kind of situation yeah i have been led astray by a rogue stakeholder uh <laughs> 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 For sure. Um, uh, and maybe part of that is, is my ADHD and, and love for interacting with people and engagements. They're like, oh, I have this great idea. Let's do this. And I'm like, let's do it. Yes. All right. <laughs> and and uh, it, it and then the rest of the team is surprised like this 
this dashboard doesn't do at all what we wanted. This is not what we, what were you thinking? Or why has this changed? So that is, is also where um, notes and also asking a lot of questions in, in that discovery and intro meeting, I need to find out, you know, who is, who is like the, the typical things people talk about, who is the primary consumer of this dashboard, who is, who are the other stakeholders, who are the decision makers, who do I need, who do we need to sign off on this in order for it to go live, right, to be in production, whose approval do we need? I'll write down all of those names and then on my meeting notes, that I have after the meeting, I'm like, we had this meeting, you said that these changes were there. I send it to everybody. Just the, those, I, I spam everybody with those meeting notes. Whether you've attended the meeting, you maybe attended one meeting, your name was mentioned. And, and at the bottom of the email say, you know, if you would like to be taken off this distribution list, just let me know, right? So I am hitting as many people as, as possible with what happened in the meeting, what decisions were discussed, and hopefully if that rogue stakeholder, some someone will speak up, right? Someone will say, oh, I don't know. I think we might be getting too far away from what we had originally intended. Someone will say something. Um, and the other thing that I'm always very wary of developing something for a team where I'm only interacting with one person. So I will always ask, um, I'll, I'll say that uh, we need we need UX testing um, to make sure that the end users, I need, I need you to volunteer some end users, you know, or, or just to get more people involved and more people looking at it. Because even if, if it's a, a you know, end user who who is wouldn't normally be in that meeting room, if they've looked at it and they're like, this is weird, why are we developing this? They will for sure go away and tell everybody that like this wonky thing that they just saw, we have no idea why this tool will be useful. It'll, it'll eventually hopefully get back to the right person, but trying to just make excuses or, or get other people to, to have eyes on it if you can. All right, awesome. That help, Homer? Yeah. yeah, and if I may, yeah, a, a, a different scenario. Yeah. So let's say you yeah. have your initial meeting with a high-level executive. Mm -hmm. and he says, all right, this is the business value I'm looking for you to deliver. And I want you to work with these people, this team or this manager, to create that. And you start having those meetings with that team, and it's really clear that what they want to build is not going to deliver the business value that your executive sponsor is looking for. How do you handle that situation? <laughs> That's tricky. Um, that is tricky. I would... Is there a great answer on it? That's tough. That's a tough one. <laughs> That's tough. This is, and this is, um, where you kind of, you do, you do have to, uh, be sort of in that feedback loop, but not be afraid to, to take a step back and say, I'm, you know, I, I love where this is going. This is interesting, but I, I want to make sure that we stay on track. The expectation and the deliverable, what we have signed up for is, is this. I'm worried that what I don't, I'm not making the connections. Maybe I'm missing something about what we're doing. You could explain to me maybe the greater, I'm missing some business context, but how, what we're doing will deliver X. You know, I, I'm, draw me a roadmap on how it gets to Y because I, I don't want to, waste or you know invest too much of, of your time and my time on working on something that's just that's not gonna you know, that's gonna flop and make us all look bad yeah yeah that helps yeah i think we've all been there it's a very sensitive uh, <laughs> uh yeah. topic but uh but yeah you approach it delicately for sure well um well laura i, I appreciate uh, all the time you took to today to to meet with us um uh, everybody give Laura a big round of applause. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, Laura. All right.
Let me Thank go ahead you and share my screen. Questions. Here. Those were tough. I appreciated that. <laughs> oh, yeah, in the back. Dog tax. Oh, your contact information. No, dog tax. I want to see the, the dog. Oh, the dog. <laughs> <laughs> the dog? All right, let's let her out. Hold on. Oh, all right, here we go. <laughs> you can't talk about it and not show it. Right, right. <laughs> Like they're not cooperating. Oh, there you go. All right, baby, baby. Well, special cameo. That's great. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a first here on our talk. We haven't had any pets, so that's awesome. Thanks, Laura. Talk to no you later. Problem. Have a great time. Enjoy your happy hour. All right. Thanks. See ya. All right. See ya. All right. So, um, so yeah, so, so we, uh, our next session, we were going to have a show and tell. Unfortunately, some of our presenters uh, had a conflict today, so we won't do that. We'll revisit that next week. But the good news, as Laura mentioned, is we have a happy hour for those that are in person, and we will be having that across the street. So after, after this, the, uh, the tug here, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll regroup over there. Um, I do, before we close, want to remind everybody, you know, our next tug event is going to be October 13th. So look for an invite coming out in the next week or so. And then please, if you get a chance, attend Dreamforce next week. It's, it's super cool. Um, you'll learn a lot of information. If you can only attend part of it, Thursday is going to be the part where they talk specifically around Tableau. So if you can only make one day, please join that day. You can uh, register online. Just go to salesforce.com and, and you'll find registration there. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Have a good day.